What's going on guys on your left here is gonna be example of my auto catcher running and on the right over here is I'm gonna try to help you build this thing yourself. Now the reason why I build this thing is because my wife uses an auto catcher and then she's always ending up with too many great balls which is a common problem apparently that I saw on reddit. I don't use an auto catcher so I don't really know so I try to build something to help her through that. Now if you guys want to see that in action there's not a lot of Pokemon here right now, but uh, at least you guys can see what it's like. Okay, that's the right one. You can see it, see it catching with just uh, Great Balls. No, it's gonna change to Great Balls. Oh, this doesn't really work well with the green screen too. I didn't think this through. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint anybody who thought I was actually in space. I am using a green screen. Yeah, let's just uh, let it catch one more here. Yeah, the reason why I'm holding up my phone is so you guys don't see that I'm just uh, clicking it myself and just posting this, this screenshot of it. It's actually doing it on its own. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, I think that's enough for now. Let me put this phone down. Okay, so if you want to build this thing yourself, uh, first, it only runs on Android. So if you're on an iPhone, you don't have access to Android, and you don't want to watch this video anymore, that's okay. Also, to let you know that it is going to require some work. It's not just a straight download, and then you can go ahead and do it. Maybe in the future, somebody will do that, someone better than me. Uh, anyways, let's get right into it. All this magic is being done using a program called Robotmon. Essentially, it's an overlay that can place inputs into your phone. In other words, instead of you grabbing your phone and let's say just clicking one spot 50 times, you can program the app to do that if that's what you want to do. With that being said, if you program it wrong, it can do some stuff you don't want it to do, so please don't be mad at me if yours ends up, let's say, transferring all your Pokemon to Professor Oak like it's his birthday or something like that. Uh, that's gonna be rare that that would happen. But uh, yeah, for myself, the worst I had was powering up a Pokemon that I didn't want to, but I fixed that problem now and had no real issues with it for the last few days. I actually built two versions of this. One is easier to understand and build yourself, but not as efficient. The other one is more difficult to build, but it's faster and more accurate because it's analyzing the screen. And quite honestly, it's not finished yet and it could be better, but I just want to get this video out there before GoFest. Like it works, but um, it's not programmed to handle things like if you come across a Team Rocket stop, maybe a weather warning. I'm not sure if it works because I haven't encountered that yet in the second build, which I will show you later on. We're gonna start with the easier version, but please be careful if you just plan to copy my inputs because if your phone doesn't have the same amount of pixels, it's not going to work. So it's gonna be better that I go through the functions used here and explain why I built it this way to prevent issues that uh, some of them that I had. All right, so going through this here, loop is just basically how many times you want to run something. So I put it here as na 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 nine because you know you just want to run it overnight. You don't want to deal with it basically. This loop one isn't necessary at all. Loop one is basically it being not there at all. But I like to put it here just to get all my clicks in here in uh, one spot. So just to show you what's happening with this build here, all these clicks is searching for Pokemon. Now, the way that I built it in these XY coordinates is that it's only clicking the top half. Now, the reason why I did it that way, originally I had it clicking the whole entire circle, but then I noticed that if it's in the Pokemon screen, that's how I powered up a Pokemon by accident. So, I'm just gonna run this right here. Uh, it's probably gonna catch something. <laughs> All right, so see how it's clicking the top half? All right, we're gonna stop the Robomon for a second. Okay, so now that it has found a Pokemon, it's going to try to catch it. Now, right here is uh, my catching, which is 750 to 1000 and 750 to 300. 750 to 1000 is about here. So my throwing is basically from this top half of the screen. Now, the reason why I did that is, let's move this out of the way. Because sometimes after you catch a Pokemon, you're going to end up in this screen. Right? So originally I didn't have it this way, and if you're scrolling, it's going to be doing that. It's going to be moving this around. But I realized that if you're in the screen, and you're doing the same swipe here, 
it doesn't move the screen. And the reason why that's dangerous is if this moves the screen and then you have all those other clicks, you can end up powering up a Pokemon, which you kind of don't want to do. So my throwing is from above this line here. And for me, that's that coordinate. Now, looking back at my chart here, there's two different throws. And one is a little bit further because some Pokemon are far away. So then I have a program to catch most Pokemon with this swipe. So that the range is going to be shorter. And the second one, it's going to be further. So it's going to be able to catch the rest of the Pokemon that the first ball didn't catch. Now, to think that it may waste balls, it only wastes balls if the Pokemon is far away. Because if it's close enough, it's going to just hit that ball, then it's going to go in and catch animation. So this second swipe won't happen whether or not it does actually catch the Pokemon. It'll just come back out, and then it's going to go through this whole entire process again, and then it's going to go back to the shorter swipe. Now, the safe sleep here are pauses. It's in milliseconds, so 2,000 is basically 2 seconds. And then these clicks here are backs. It's uh, where the X is. Because after you catch the Pokemon, you'll need to back out of it with the X. So we're just going to let this simple one run. See with this one, it's just clicking all over the place because it doesn't know where it is on the screen. It doesn't know that it's in the catch phase. So it's just running through the list over and over again. But the way that it's designed, it's supposed to not do anything bad. Something that you don't want. So eventually, you should click that OK. Once it gets there, the check mark. Finds the next one, and it's going to go from there. All right, so let's go back to my list and maybe explain it more. Again, these are all the clicks on the top half. Let's see what else I need to explain. Oh yeah, this swipe here. This swipe here does two things. Number one, it rotates the screen if it didn't catch anything. So maybe it's stuck on the bottom half, right? Because I'm only clicking on the top half. So once you swipe across the screen, it's going to rotate it around. Also, if it happened to found a stop, it's going to spin that stop. So I should let you also know that it doesn't spin gyms because it requires an extra push. But then that's going to be solved in the next build. So uh, let's try to show you guys Hmm. I want to show you guys it rotating the screen. Okay, I'm going to set it up like this, just so there is no Pokemon or anything in the top half. So once it goes through all those clicks, it doesn't see anything. And it just turns. Alright, I'm saving some Pokemon here to show you the other build. So if you guys understood that build, uh, I don't know if you guys are pausing, rewinding. I kind of don't want you guys to copy my list. That's why I didn't like go through it one by one and say, oh yeah, click 900 and 1600. You know, I kind of, I don't feel super comfortable about that because I don't want people to be mad at me. But anyways, let's go through the other one. Alright, so this one is a little bit different because it's analyzing a color with a pixel that you set and then it does what it does accordingly to that color. So for example here I have if color whatever 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 right so essentially what that if color is is that if this part here is orange it's going to do all the clicks because if you're on any other screen this part won't be orange. So let's just run this here it knows that it's orange so it's going to do that it's going to start clicking right away. For my clicks, I only have it in this quadrant because I don't want spillover. I want it to be as accurate as possible. Okay, so now that it knows that it's in this screen... Oh, I have it on Great Balls only still. That's okay. <laughs> okay, so now that it knows that it's in this screen, it's analyzing a different color now, uh, which is this one here. So what I programmed it to do is that analyzing that this corner raspberry here is purple. If it's purple, then it's going to start the throwing which I have uh, here, which I have the throwing. Now this loop is interesting. It's at one, meaning I have the great balls only turned on. So this here is what's taking it, uh, or which is selecting the balls and changing it to a great ball. So you see in this example here, it just pulled a great ball. I'm gonna change this back to zero. So you click edit, you put zero in here. 
So if you click loop zero, then it's not going to happen, which means that it's not going to use great balls anymore. It's just going to use whichever ball that you have. So just to show you guys that in action, I'm going to play it here. So this means that I took great ball off and it's just using whatever ball that I have, which happens to be some red balls. Oh no, I only have 10 red balls left. Okay, well, just to show you guys, you guys don't need to see the rest of this stuff. Okay, so there are other screens here, like let's say after you catch the Pokemon, the OK screen, and then the check mark after that, and that's all accounted for by picking a color. It also does spin, uh, and what I chose to spin is this little green part of this arrow up here. Yeah, it's so small, it was kind of difficult to pinpoint. But I found the color of it and then I uh, used the green part here. And the reason why I did that is because a gym and the stop, there's that same arrow and then you want to spin it, right? But the way I programmed it, like I said, is kind of inefficient. It's, it's the same. So regardless if it's a stop, I have a program to click this area here, which for a gym means to spin it and then swipe and then back out and all that stuff but I could program them separately. I was kind of just lazy and I just wanted to do a, a two for one kind of thing. But uh, yeah, using that place marker, I feel like it's pretty good because it doesn't matter which color that uh, your gym is, it's just gonna work. And I guess I should let you guys know how I found the colors of these exact pixels. It uses RGB. So um, I use an app here called Color Picker. I took a screenshot of this and then well, how do you use it is that you blow this up. Blow this up so that it knows for sure. Yep, then you have to lock it in place. And once you do that, you move this around to wherever you want to check. And I chose this green tip of the arrow here. And then you pick it right there. And then you click this. And right here, it gives you the RGB, which is pretty, pretty cool, pretty nifty stuff. So that's how I use this in conjunction with Robomon to get the actual pixel colors. And then once you say that, hey, if this section or this pixel is this color, then do this. And that's how it is more efficient. And you can definitely spin gems and it won't go through a whole bunch of random just before it does it. Uh, I can show that to you guys, even though I'm not at the gym. Uh, okay, let's go back to Pokemon. Oop, is this Pokemon? I think this is Pokemon. Okay. All right. Yep, I'm in the right list. Okay, so it's not gonna actually spin the gym because I'm not there. <laughs> it's, not, it's not gonna work. <laughs> but it is gonna go through the series as if it was trying to. Oh, I guess it's blocked out. <clears throat> Yeah, because this is whited out, like clicking here manually doesn't doesn't do anything. So I guess that's not a good example. I think with the stop it works though. So we're gonna do that. I can see the stop from here, but I can't spin it from here, from where I live, unfortunately. But yeah, see that little nudge there? It tried to spin it, but it, it won't spin it because it's just not close enough. By now, I've showed you guys enough to understand the functions, to be able to build your own, and hopefully you can tailor it to your own situation. For instance, if you're using a mystery box to get melting candies, you can set one up to feed pineapples and use ultra balls before throwing. For me personally, the next thing I'm working on is sending and receiving gifts automatically. And uh, because Robomon is so flexible, you may even be playing another grindy game that Robomon can help you with. But overall, I don't think this replaces a need for an auto catcher. But it's pretty great if you don't have one, and if you do, it's a good way to get rid of your great balls without auto shutting off overnight. The main reason why I think it can't replace an auto catcher is that your phone screen has to be on all the time for it to work, and we all know how fast your phone can die while playing this game. Meaning I would mainly use it for places where I can leave my phone in a charger, being at work, home, or even driving. Anyways, that's going to be it for this one, but we'll see you in the next. Bye.